In this video, we're going to look at plotting a quadratic graph from a table. A quadratic graph is often called a parabola and will be a sweeping curve. Don't be tempted to get a ruler and connect the points up with straight lines. So what we're going to do, we're going to plot the graph of y is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 10 for the values of x from negative 4 to positive 7. We can tell it's a quadratic as the highest power of x is x squared. So what I'm going to do is plug in minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, right the way up to positive 7 and find the corresponding y value. I'm going to do this in a calculator. Often you'll be expected to do it without, but we'll do it in a calculator for now. So the way I like to set this up is put the brackets in and then square my term, minus 3 lots and put my brackets in and then minus a 10. You can do this with a table function. I just prefer this particular approach. So what we're going to do then is start off with negative 4. Remember, when we square a negative term, it becomes positive. Then the negative 4 is going to go in here, and we will get our first value of positive 18. So that's going to go like so. So we put positive 18 in there. This is a bit of a tedious process, but all we're going to do is now swap them over, and we're going to get our value for now negative 3. We get the value of negative 3, which is positive 8. We'll do, now do it with uh, negative 2, so let's swap that over now to negative 2, and we will find that that will give us now 0, okay? So that gives us 0, and then the next one, we're going to do negative 1, let's put that in, so negative 1 will be in here, and that's going to give us a value of minus 6. Then when we put in 0, we're going to end up with minus 10. If x is 0, the only thing that we're going to have is minus 10. We can, of course, check that on the calculator, but we should spot that that's going to give us now the minus 10. So if you want to put that in, 0 is going in into the brackets, and that will give us our minus 10. We'll swap this over now for 1, and we'll swap those over, and we're going to end up now with minus 12. So minus 12. Then we'll try it with 2. So let's put that in there. 2 is going in here. And we're going to end up now with, on here, another minus 12. So let's put that in. We're now going to put 3 in. And what you may start spotting soon is that this is going to become symmetric. A parabola, or quadratic graph, is symmetric about a certain point. So let's uh, put in our 3. That gives us a minus 10. So you can see now what we're going to end up with then. If we put 4 in, we're going to have minus 6. It's symmetric about this point. When we put 5 in, we're going to have 0. When we put 6 in, we're going to have 8. And when we put 7 in, we're going to have 18. If you want to test those, you're more than welcome to do so. So for example, if we wanted to put in here the 7, what we'll end up with now is the 18 that we've just shown. Okay, and you can do it if you're unsure, if you're not confident, that's perfectly fine. Just keep switching it back over and you'll see that those values are exactly what we have now in our table. So what we're going to do is go ahead and plot this. So we'll start with x is minus 4 and y is going to be 18. So let's grab up a dot then and we'll, I uh, might have to move this around. So what we're going to have then is a following. Let's just grab that up. We're going to have now on here... When x is minus 4, y is going to be 18, which is going to be just there. Okay? And then on the next one, what we're going to end up with is the minus 3, 8. So minus 3, 8 is going to be just there. And then on the next one, we've got the negative 2, 0. So negative 2, 0 will be now on the x-axis. The next one that we've got here down, let's move that up there. We're going to have now on here... Zero, uh, minus 1, minus 6, so minus 1, minus 6, so let's do that one, that's going to be just here, and then we have the 0, minus 10, which we saw there, we've got the 1, minus 12, and the 2, minus 12, so let's put those on, there's 1, minus 12, and there's 2, minus 12. A pet hate of mine is a straight line across there, this is going to now be a sweeping curve, so we'll have a minimum point somewhere down here. What we can now see from here is we are now symmetric, so we're going to get the minus 10, which is going to be just here. Then we're going to get on 4, we're going to get the value of minus 6, as we can see from our table there. 
and then we've got now the five is going to be the zero which is just going to be there and moving this up we're going to end up now on here with six being eight so let's put that just there that'll be just there and okay let's put that on six eight and then finally what we want on here now is the last one that we needed to plot and that's going to be up here and that's going to be now the seven comma eighteen it won't always be the case that you have exactly the same value in the first box as the last box. It's just the fact that I've gone from minus 4 to positive 7. If you're asked to go from minus 4 to 6, you'll see that the end two values are not going to be the same. One thing we can see, though, it's symmetric about this point here. So let's do that now. And um, What I'm going to do is now connect this up. So what I'll put on here, I'll connect it up. And there we go. So give or take, it's going to look something like that. And we'll just, let's scroll in. And it's going to look something like so. So at the bottom here, we've not got a straight line. It becomes a sweeping curve through all of those points. You won't be penalised heavily if your curve isn't brilliant. But you will be if it's a straight line, if there's any straight lines. And after a while, you just get used to uh, just drawing the, the nice... Uh, nice curves and of course this continues onwards and upwards okay let's look at the next part of the question we're asked to find the roots of the equation x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0 so what we can do from the graph is find that the roots are the solution so for or for roots are the solutions I should say so what we'll do is look at that we want to know where they're equal to 0 they're equal to 0 just here and they're equal to 0 just here this is the line y is equal to naught. So we can say that the answers to that are going to be x is going to be equal to minus 2 or x is going to be equal to positive 5. And we can see that from our table. Often you won't have one that gives you exact values and you'll have to give an approximate value based on the curve. So for example now, if it went through at this point here, we'd have to give an approximate value of 4.75, and if it went through here, minus 3.25, or similar. The idea of using this one is that it's going to give us nice numbers. If you've ever factored quadratics, you'll appreciate that that does factor to give us x plus 2, and then x minus 5 is equal to 0. So if we were to solve, we could see that x was either equal to minus 2 or positive 5. The y-intercept now, well, that's when x is naught, and we can see from there that that's going to be minus 10. On the graph, that's that point there. The y-intercept is where it's going through the y-axis, and that point is going to be at 0, comma, minus 10. So there we go, basic plotting of a quadratic graph from a table, and you will be asked similar questions. Roots just means the solutions, and all you're doing when it's set to 0, just read it off from the x-axis.